Hey everybody, it's Lissa. Welcome back to my channel. So as you can see from the title today, we are doing a crochet video. I have been requested by many people to do a tutorial on how to crochet because I did learn when I was younger. So today I'm going to be teaching you guys the basics of crocheting and I'm also going to teach you how to make a little cat. But before I get started with the video, I would just like to thank today's sponsor. So for today's sponsor, we have the Liberty Air 2 Pro earbuds, which have been endorsed by 10 10 Grammy artists. And it's a great cheaper alternative to bigger brands such as the Apple AirPods. These earbuds have pure sound via targeted active noise canceling, Pure Note TM driver technology, which gets you 45% boost to your bass and a 30% wider frequency bandwidth than ordinary drivers, Pearl D personalized EQ to ensure a perfect listening experience, up to 26 hours of playtime, which is seven hours of playback from a single charge, and up to three recharges on the charge charging case, clear calls with their six noise canceling microphones and noise reduction. Since a lot of people are working at home right now, you need really good headphones to be able to do your calls and stuff for work. So you can use these headphones for working, calling, going outside to take your dog for a walk, to listen to music, to cancel out all those noises so you can focus on what you're doing and reading. That's what I personally like to do. Working out, gaming, the possibilities are endless. You can use these headphones for pretty much anything. They come in many different colors. My personal favorite favorite being the pink ones. And we also have Mother's Day coming right around the corner, so this would be a perfect gift for all of those mothers, grandmothers, any mothers you know out there. Pretty much anyone can use earpods nowadays for anything, so I think some earbuds would be a great Mother's Day gift to give you guys an idea. I have been using them almost every day since getting them, and I've been using them for editing my videos and listening to music, and they have been phenomenal. So if you guys are interested in picking up some of these earbuds yourself, I will have a link for the Liberty Air 2 Pros down below just in case you guys are interested. So now that we are done with that, let's go ahead and get straight into the video. So as many of you guys know, I have been crocheting for a very long time now. My grandmother actually taught me when I was a little kid how to crochet and I've been doing it ever since. So I wouldn't say I'm a professional or I'm like amazing by any means, but I do know the basics and I can follow patterns pretty well. And a lot of you guys have asked me to do a video showing you the basics and I figured that would be super fun. I have had to deal with a lot of people um, taking the time out of their day to come on to my social medias and my DMs to tell me how boring my videos are now. So now I'm just gonna make them super boring and I'm also going to show you guys how to crochet because I find it fun. So let's do that. <laughs> I do crochet for fun. I sell stuff on my Etsy. I've always done it for fun. It's very relaxing. It's something that really helps with my anxiety and it's something that passes time. So I'm gonna just basically go over the basics with you and then teach you something. So first I'm going to tell you the basic materials you are going to need to get started with crocheting. It's not very expensive. You only need a couple little items to get started and if you don't like it then you won't be wasting that much money. Okay sorry guys. I I had to take that wig off. It was making my head so itchy. <laughs> So of course the basic materials you're going to need is yarn, of course. Now I personally buy just the cheapest yarn because I personally like working with cheaper yarn. It works the best for me. Yarn can get pretty expensive if you get like the more expensive materials and stuff like that. So do keep that in mind. I went to Michael's yesterday and I got some to show you brands that I typically buy. So at Michael's, I typically get the Craftsmart brand because I think it was like $2 per roll or I get the Red Heart super saver. I personally really like brands because they don't feel super, super cheap because they're not super cheap, but they're also not super expensive. They're about two to three dollars per roll. And I really like the way that they feel personally. So these are the brands that I use. There are some other brands that I use before, like the soft essentials and stuff like that. It just depends on what you want. It depends on what pattern you're using. Usually your pattern will tell you what they're using if you want to copy them. Next, you're going to need a crochet hook. You only want to buy one size that is completely completely fine. There are some kits with every single size included that you can get for pretty cheap on Amazon, which I buy. I personally like metal crochet hooks better than plastic because I feel like metal grips on to the yarn better. I feel like I have a better grip, but it's all personal and just kind of have to figure out what you like. But I personally like these metal ones. And if you look on a crochet hook, it will tell you what size it is. So as you can see from this blue one, it is a 5.5 millimeter, which is an I-9. 
line. Sometimes your hook will have a letter on it and sometimes it will have a number. I personally don't know what each letter equivalates to each number. I usually just Google it. As you can see from this one, it just says it's a 3.5, but some of my other ones have a letter on them and the number, and then some of them will just have letters on them. But basically, this number is just telling you how big the hook is, and it usually depends on how big your project is gonna be. So that's why when you're working on certain patterns, they will tell you which size crochet hook you need to get the size that they got. The bigger the hook, the bigger your project is gonna be. The smaller your hook, the smaller the project is gonna be. I bought this little kit right here from Amazon that came with um, lighted crochet hooks, which I really like, but it is plastic, parts are, so I feel like it would be kind of hard for beginners to use. So I personally, for beginners, I'd recommend you getting metal hooks, but you can find metal hooks in these really nice little kits on Amazon, that in mind, but that is also an option, of course. The next thing I recommend is stitch markers of some sort. This is what they can look like. So stitch markers are basically exactly what they sound like they are. They just mark your stitches so you can keep track with the end of your rows or whatever you're working on. And it'll kind of make sense once you see it, but you will definitely, definitely need these, especially if you're gonna be doing like amigurumi type stuff. I think that's how you say that, amigurumi. I honestly have never said it out loud, so. These are definitely recommended. I think this was like 99 cents. So just whatever you can find. I used to use safety pins when I couldn't afford to buy these. Next, you're going to need a yarn needle of some sort. I prefer metal ones because like I said, they just feel like they work better in they hold onto the yarn a little bit better, but a lot of things come with plastic ones. Plastic ones are completely fine as well. I use plastic ones too. I just prefer my metal ones. So you need a yarn needle. This is used for pulling in the ends of your work or threading stuff through. You use these a lot. So I would just recommend getting them straight off the bat, especially because most patterns use it anyway. And lastly, you're going to need some scissors. So the little kit I had came with scissors that would work specifically for yarn. You don't need specific scissors like this, just any kind that will cut your yarn. And that's the basic materials I recommend getting. Yarn, hooks, stitch markers, yarn needle, and scissors. That are just the basic things I recommend getting. Next, I'm going to teach you what all of the things on the yarn label right here mean, because sometimes when you look at it, it can get super confusing, but these things do matter when it comes to figuring out what yarn you want to get. Also, a way I have been saving my labels, because sometimes you'll run out of yarn and you have to go back to the store to get the same yarn, is I've been taking the labels off and then tying a piece of the yarn onto it so I can keep up with what yarn I had if I need to take it to the craft store with me and stuff like that. So that's a way to keep track of all of these. I would keep all of these labels for sure. First thing you will see right here is a little yarn ball as you can see and it has a number in the middle. So that number basically means how thick or thin this yarn is. So mine is a four so it's kind of a me medium. This is the most frequently used size that you'll see on yarn. It's called worsted weight which is one of the most basic yarns that people we use for patterns and stuff like that. So yeah, this was a number four. A number zero or number one would mean your yarn is super, super thin. I don't have any here to show you. And then it can go all the way up to like seven, I think, or bigger. And seven is super, super thick. So always look at that to know what size yarn you're using. I always use about a four or a five. And next we have all of these little logos right here. So these are all washing instructions right here. There are charts on Google that you can look up that'll show you what each one means if you don't know what it means. Basically on mine, it means that I can put mine in the washing machine at these temps. It also means that I can put them in the dryer, but it has to be on low tumble dry. It cannot be ironed and it cannot be bleached. So that's what these four logos mean right here. And then right here are the gauges in which you could do with this yarn, if that makes sense. So I didn't really understand what the gauge was until I personally looked it up myself because I've never had to really do anything with gauging sizes or anything. But I have it typed down right here so I don't say it wrong. It's how many stitches in rows that can make a square inch when you're knitting or crocheting. So that's why there's a knitting and crocheting. So it'll just say right there, if you use that crochet hook, then this is how much you can get per square inch. I'm sorry if the lighting starts getting really bad. It has been storming horribly all morning, like tornadoes, and I think Think it's about to do it again. So it's gonna start getting like light and dark, but I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible. So I'm really sorry about the lighting. It's gonna be kind of a cozy video today. So also on the label, we have the material. So this is 100% acrylic. You'll see wool, acrylic, 
all these different types of materials. So just get what you want to use for that specific pattern. Then we have the color name right here and then like the lot number and everything like that. So that is everything that would be on a label. And as you can see, it's pretty basic. This is a different brand, but it looks about the same. It has the same type of logos and everything like that. And usually there's always a pattern on the other side of these as well, just to let you know. So now that we know what's on the yarn, now I'm just going to go over the basic stitches and abbreviations that you'll see when you're looking at a pattern. Okay, we just had to get out the ring light, so the glasses are coming off, but <laughs> this video is a whole mess. I am so sorry. But the basic stitches and stuff that you'll see, if you ever click on a pattern, and if you don't know what a pattern is of what I've been saying this whole time is basically a pattern is something that you follow to make something if you want to follow one. Some people don't use patterns. They just do what they want to do off the top of their head and they do it. Personally, I usually follow patterns because it's easier. But when you are following patterns, you will see certain abbreviations and stuff like that. And it can get very, very confusing if you're a beginner. So I have a couple of stitches that I am going to go over with you guys that you typically see when you are following basic beginner patterns. I'm going to show you them with my hands as well. So I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible with you guys. You can also always go back and rewatch it over and over again and just practice over and over and over again because you're not going to be perfect from the beginning. It took me a long, long time to get where I am now. So the first abbreviation you see when you're following a pattern is just stitch. This is not any type of stitch. Someone will just say you need to use this type of stitch and it's usually abbreviated by ST. So if you see ST when you're looking at a pattern, it normally means stitch. Next we have chain stitch, which is basically when you are chaining the beginning of your work to start your project. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what a chain stitch is really fast. Okay, to start a chain, the first thing you do is of course, start with your yarn. You're just gonna make a knot where you twist it around your fingers like this. You go under this one, over this one, pull it through, and it'll make the beginning of your little chain here. And then for chains, it's super easy. All you do is yarn over, pull through the loop. Yarn over, pull through the loop. So when a pattern is telling you to chain 20, that means you make 20 of these little chains. So, and you'll just keep going until it tells you to stop. Sometimes for blankets you have to chain like 200. But yeah, that's the beginning of a chain. Next we have a slip stitch, which is something that you will do a lot in even basic patterns, which is basically when you're just slipping your needle through to stitch something together. It makes more sense once you see it. So let me show you that real fast. All right, now I'm gonna show you guys how to do a slip stitch. So slip stitching is normally done like at the end of like circular rows and stuff like that, but since I'm making a little square, I'm just going to show you what you would do with a slip stitch. So basically, you would just put your needle through whatever stitch your last stitch is, like this. And then you would yarn over and just pull through both of your loops. And that is a slip stitch. And that's usually done at the end of rows and stuff like that. So now I can finish off the project by cutting it and finishing off my little square. Next we have the easiest stitch in my opinion, which is just a basic single crochet. This is used in a lot of beginner patterns because single crochet is the easiest stitch that you can do. So here is a single crochet. All right, now for a single crochet. So we have our chain worked right here. And normally they don't tell you to go right into this first chain. They'll tell you to go into like the second or the third. So to make a single crochet, you take your hook and you push it in to whatever chain it tells you to. You'll have two on the loop. You're gonna yarn over. You're going to pull this through the first loop only. You'll have two on your hook. Then you're gonna yarn over and pull through those last two. And that's how you do a single crochet. So let me just do it one more time. Put your hook into there. Yarn over, pull through the first loop. You'll have two on your hook yarn over and pull through the remaining two and you have 
single crochet. Next stitch is a half double crochet, which is kind of in between a single crochet and a double crochet. It's kind of just in the middle there. And half double crochets are included a lot in beginner patterns as well. I see them pretty frequently, so I figured I would include that in here as well. All right, I just did a row of single crochets, and now to go to the next row, usually they will tell you to like chain one or chain two to go to the next row. So I'm going to chain one, I'm gonna turn it around and now we're going to do half double crochets. So to do a half double crochet, before you put your needle through the first stitch, you're going to yarn over, then put your needle through this first stitch, not the stitch that we made in the chain. You're gonna yarn over, pull through the first loop, and you'll have three. Then you're gonna yarn over again and pull through all three on the hook and that makes a half double crochet. So let's just do it one more time. Yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, and you have a half double crochet. Next we have a double crochet. I personally love double crochets the most. That's pretty much what is done in most of my projects. The bucket hats that I make are basically done in all double crochets. So here's that stitch. All right, now for the next row, I'm going to show you how to do a double crochet. So the first thing you do is yarn over and then you're going to push it through the first stitch. You're going to yarn over, pull through this first one, kind of like we're doing a half double crochet. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through the first two. Then yarn over again and pull through the last two. And that's a double crochet. So let's just do that one more time. Yarn over, push into the stitch, yarn over, pull through the first one, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the last two and you have a double crochet. And then the last one is the triple or the treble crochet. Depending on what pattern and where the pattern was created, usually people from the UK will say treble crochet, but a lot of people in the US will say triple crochet, but triple and treble are the same thing and they will look the same in a pattern. Triple crochet is a lot bigger than a double, of course, so you're basically going from single, double, triple, and it just gets bigger each time. I don't use triples as much um, in beginner patterns. You don't typically see it as much on there, but it's very simple. So let me show you that real fast. All right, now I'm going to show you guys the treble or the triple crochet. So instead of yarning over once like a double crochet, you're going to yarn over twice like this then you're gonna go into the first stitch and you're gonna have four of them on here you're going to yarn over pull through the first one then you're going to have four then you're going to pull through the first two yarn over pull through the first two again then yarn over and pull through the last two. So you're pulling through two, three times. So let's just do it one more time. You're going to yarn over twice, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through the first one. You'll have four on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, pull through the first two loops again, and yarn over and pull through the last two. And that is your treble or triple crochet. So those are the basic stitches and abbreviations you normally see in beginner patterns. Of course, there will always be little extras that you'll see in beginner patterns that sometimes make no sense, but I promise you it will get easier. So now I'm going to switch the camera around and I'm going to show you a free crochet pattern that I found on Pinterest. You can find hundreds of free patterns on Pinterest. You don't have to pay for a pattern, but Etsy is also a great place to pay for $2 patterns as well. And I'm going to show you how to make this and you can follow along with me if you would like. It's going to be super fun. This video is going to be so long. But let's go ahead and do it. So real quick, as you can see here from Pinterest, this is my Pinterest by the way, but you can find free patterns for so many different things. This is the one I'm going to be showing you guys today. Like I said, it's free, so I'm not stealing anything to show you guys or anything like that. You can pretty much find anything on here and also on Etsy as well. 
And if you just type in beginner crochet pattern, you should find something nice. So let's go ahead and do this one. So as you can see, this pattern tells you what materials you need. So I'm going to be using pink and lavender yarn. It also tells you what size crochet hook to use. So it says here that they used a two millimeter hook, which means their cat is super, super tiny. But since I don't want to use one so small for this tutorial, I'm just going to use a 3.5 and it's going to just be a little bit bigger. She used a two millimeter to make sure that the cat was very small. We also need polyfiber fill to fill the little cat with stuffing, a tapestry needle like I showed you at the beginning, safety eyes, which I do have as well, and black embroidery thread to make the face. And it, as you can see, it says that this pattern was written in US term, which means we're gonna be using a chain, single crochet, decreasing, which I will show you how to do. You're basically just taking two single crochets and you're putting them together. And when you see things in a little asterisks like that, in between the asterisks, it means that you will repeat the things, which makes more sense once we get to them, so I'll explain that to you. So when you look at patterns, it can kind of get overwhelming and confusing. I totally, totally understand how this would be very confusing, but don't worry, it's not that bad once you get a hold of it. So typically what I like to do is I screenshot it. I went ahead and brought it into Procreate, so when I'm done, I can just mark it off. So first we are going to be using pink colored yarn and for round one we're going to be doing six single crochets in a magic ring. So let me show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and get started. So you're going to want to take your yarn of course and it says pink in the pattern but I was starting with the pink in the filming and you couldn't really see the stitches very well so I'm gonna try purple so you guys can see a little bit better. So I have my pattern downloaded right here. I put it into Procreate so I can mark off each round that I do so I recommend doing that if you have that option. So first we're gonna start with round one using whatever color you want to start with first. I'm gonna use purple and we're going to do six single crochets into a magic ring so I'm going to show you what a magic ring is. Pretty much every amigurumi type project start with magic rings, so you're definitely going to want to learn this because most patterns start with this. So let's go ahead and get started. So first you're going to want to take a little bit of a tail and hang it down right here. I just hold it with my thumb finger. And you're going to take the rest of the yarn and wrap it around your three fingers here underneath and then wrap it above and then crisscross them like this, and then I just hold it with my pinky to keep it a little bit more secure. Then I'm going to take the hook, I'm going to go under this first string right here. I'm gonna hook the second one, and then pull the second one through. And after I pull it through, I'm just gonna kinda twist it towards me, like this. And then the string that you're holding with your pinky back here, you're going to want to hook that, and pull it through that little loop you just made and you made a magic ring. So it can kind of get confusing, but if you just keep doing it over and over again, I promise you it makes sense. It's not that hard. There are some tutorials on YouTube that will teach you that a little bit better than I will, but that's the best that I <laughs> could do with my camera quality and everything like that. So there's a magic ring and that's how you start it. So now we're going to do six single crochets into this magic ring, and it may sound like something that is super confusing and you have no idea how you would even do that, but I promise you it's not that hard. It feels a little awkward, but you get used to it. So what you're gonna do is I always make sure that I'm holding my yarn with my two fingers right here so it stays out of the way. So one tip is just to always have your two fingers holding this right here and then your other fingers holding your project. It keeps everything nice and tight and you're not kind of just wobbling everywhere. But you're going to put your needle into the magic circle, yarn over, pull it into the circle like that, then yarn over and pull it through. And you just did one single crochet. So let's do that again. We're gonna go into the circle, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again, and we have two. And as you can see the stitches, we have one, two. We're gonna go back into the circle, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the two. And now we have three. <laughs> and as you can see, we're basically just making the single crochets. So let's do three more. Going in, yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through two. And you can kind of just focus on what my fingers are doing. 
so you can kind of see how I work my fingers when I'm doing the magic circle because it is kind of confusing. So we're gonna go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and we made another single crochet. And if you lose track of your stitches, all you can do is just count them. So one, two, three, four, five, we need six. So let's do one more. So there we go. We have six single crochets into a magic circle. This pattern doesn't do very well at telling you to pull the magic ring closed, but that is what you do next. So since you have the six, what you're gonna do is take this little tail right here and you're just going to pull it closed like that, and now you have a little circle. So this pattern works in continuous rounds, which means you're not going to connect the rounds together with a slip stitch, which a lot of patterns would normally do. We're just gonna be working in circles. So that's where these little stitch markers come into play. It's going to be kind of awkward using this these stitch markers while working on such a small project, but I promise you, you need them. So as you can see, we have the six stitches, so I'm just gonna mark that we did that, and now we're gonna go to the next round, which is two single crochets into each stitch. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we're going to go on to the next stitch. We might not be able to see very well, but you can kind of see what each stitch looks like. And we're gonna be doing two single crochets. So we're gonna push our hook into there. And it may be a little tight, you just gotta push it in there a little bit. And then I am going to be working this tail into my work as I'm going. If that's too hard for you to do, then don't even bother with this tail, just keep it out of the way and cut it off later. But now we're going to be doing two single crochets into each stitch. So yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through two. And then now instead of going to the next stitch, we're gonna go back into the same whole stitch right there. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and that did two stitches right there. So now this is the point where you would put your little stitch marker in. This is the new stitch that we made for the new round. So that means we need to mark it off, just like that. It's going to get in the way, but over time it won't be as bad. So now we're gonna work around the circle into doing two stitches for each round. So here is the next stitch as you can see. So we're going to push our hook into there, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and that's one single crochet. Now we're gonna go back into that same whole stitch and do another one. And then we did two into that stitch. Now, as you can see, this is the next stitch. We're gonna go into there, pull through, do one single crochet, you can see the hole is still there. I'm gonna put it back in and do another one. So we're basically doubling the stitches that we had before. So at the end of this row, you should have 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way around real fast and then we'll go to the next round. So now we're at the end of the row. As you can see, the next stitch is the one that we have marked off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the little stitch marker out because we need to work on that next stitch. And another way to figure out that you are right and you're at the end of the row is to count your stitches. So we should have 12 right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we are correct. So now we are just going to mark off that we did round two and now we're gonna work on round three. So this may look kind of confusing. You see all the asterisks and stuff and you, your mind may blow up, I totally understand. But basically that means that we're just repeating what is in the parentheses until the end of the row. So in the next stitch, we're going to do just one single crochet. And then in the next stitch after that, we're going to do two. And then we're just gonna go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, until we get to the end of the row. And at the end, you'll have 18 stitches. So I'll explain and show you what that looks like. So we're going to be doing just one single crochet. So let's get into the next stitch, which is right here. We're going to put one single crochet into there. And since we did that one, I'm going to take my stitch marker and stitch it up. So we know that that is the first stitch of the new round. And then in the next one, instead of doing one, we're going to do two. So in the next stitch, I'm gonna push through and do one single crochet. And then go back into the same hole and do another crochet. So we did two stitches into that one stitch. Now we have the next stitch right here. 
and we're only going to do one single crochet. And then we have the next stitch, we're going to do two. So there was one. We're going to go back into that same hole and we're going to do another one. And then the next one we're going to do one, the next one we're going to do two, and you basically just do one, two, one, two until you get back to your little stitch marker here. And you should have 18 stitches at the end. So let me go ahead and finish this round. All right, I just finished row three and I just counted all of the stitches and I have 18. So we are done with round. So let's just mark it off and now we're going to do round four. So for round four, we're going to do single crochets into the next two stitches. So one single crochet into the next two and then two into one stitch. So that's basically how amigurumi works. You're basically just increasing stitches each round until slowly it gets bigger and bigger. So let's go ahead and do that real fast. We're going to take our stitch marker out for a second. And as you can see, I've been working this tail in and it's getting shorter and shorter. So eventually it's just gonna kind of disappear. But if that's too hard for you, like I said, you can just cut it from the beginning, but it's more, it's safer this way to just go ahead and work it through. So now we're gonna do a single crochet into the next two stitches. So here is the next stitch. We're gonna do one crochet. Then we're gonna to go to the next stitch and do one crochet. And then the next stitch right here, we're gonna do two. One, same hole. And don't do like me, always remember to put your little stitch marker in so you don't <laughs> mess up. So now we're gonna do a single crochet, then the next stitch, stitch one single crochet, and then in the next stitch we're going to do two. So one, go back into the same hole, and do two. So now we're just doing one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, all the way down until we get back to the original stitch. So let me do the rest real fast and I'll get back. All right, we're done with round four and I counted just to make sure we have 24 stitches just like we should. So now I'm going to mark off round four on my little pattern over here and now we're going to work on to round five. So round five is single crochets into the next three and then two into the ones after that. So we're gonna do one, 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 two, one, 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 two, until the end of the round. This is basically how it's going to continue to work. So let me just show you that real fast. So in the next stitch right here, we're going to do one single crochet, and then we're going to mark it off. In the next stitch, we're going to do one single crochet, And in the next stitch, we're going to do only one. And then in the fourth one, we're going to do two single crochets. So we have one, and then we're gonna go back into the same hole and do another one. And then we're gonna do one, 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 and then put two in that one. And you just keep going all the way around and we'll be done with round five. All right, we just finished round five and I counted the stitches to make sure that we were right and we do have 30 stitches like we're supposed to. So I'm gonna mark off round five and in round six, we're going to do single crochets in the next four and then two. So we're gonna do one, 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 two. So that's basically how I count in my head or I'll do one, two, three, four, two is what I do in my head. You're basically just working continuously each round and adding a stitch each round. That's how a lot of these patterns work. So the lighting got a little bit better so you might be able to see better. Here is the next stitch. So we're going to do a single crochet. The next one, I'm gonna do one single crochet. The next one, one single crochet. And then the next one, one single crochet. And after four single crochets, then this next stitch is going to have two. So here's one, and going back into this same hole, we're going to do two. So then I'm gonna do one, two, three, four again, and then double in that one, and I'm just gonna go all the way around again. And I forgot to put my stitch marker, but if you just count back the stitches, then you'll be able to put your stitch marker in the right place, but sometimes I forget. <laughs> all right, I just finished row six. 
So we can go ahead and mark that off. And now we're going to do single crochets into the next five and then do two into the sixth stitch. So let's just do that really fast. We're going to do a single crochet and I'm going to remember to put my stitch marker in this time to set a good example for you beginners out there that should be using your stitch markers. And then we're going to do one single crochet again. That makes two. The next stitch we're going to do another single crochet. That's three. The next we have four. And then the next we have the fifth. And then the sixth stitch we're going to do two single crochets into that one stitch. So there's one. Have the hole again. I'm going to go back into the same hole and do two. And now I'm just going to do that again. So I'm going to do one into the next one, two, three, four, five, and then do two into that sixth one. And you're just going to keep going five, two, five, two, five, two, and then until you get to the all the way to the end of round seven. And then it's going to switch up a little bit. So let's, I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. All right, I just finished row seven. I counted my stitches just to make sure it lines up with the pattern, and I have 42 stitches. So now we are going to cross off round seven here. And as you can see, for the next eight rows, from row eight to row 19, you're going to just do one single crochet into each stitch. So you're just gonna keep going around and around and around and around until you do those rows, eight through 19. So let me just go ahead and show you that real fast and kind of teach you how to keep track of your rows. So let me take out the stitch marker real fast and let me just do one single crochet into this next stitch here. All right, so that makes us know that we just started off with a new round. So now we're just gonna keep going around. We're gonna keep going into each stitch, just doing a single crochet. And this actually goes pretty fast because single crochets are really easy. You just keep working all the way around. As you can see, I'm doing it pretty fast once you get into the hang of it. But I don't know if you guys can kind of see my form. I'm using my two fingers here to hold the yarn while I'm working. And then I'm also using the rest of my fingers and my thumb to kind of hold the project that I am currently working on to try to keep it stiff in my hands. Because I've noticed a lot of beginners when they're trying to learn, they don't really know what to do with their hands and it's just not stiff enough and it gets all loose and it just doesn't look right. Most crochet patterns look the best when you keep everything tight, so make sure you're always just pulling this string as tight as possible unless your pattern tells you that you should work loosely. It always looks better when you just keep pulling. So after you finish each stitch, I always just do a little pull and you might not be able to see it when I'm doing it, but I know that I am doing it because I always just kind of pull at the end. So you're just gonna keep working around and around and you can count in your head how many rows you have done if you want, but your stitch marker will help you with the rows because you can count the rows, you can visibly see them. As you can see, we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows, which we're on row eight right now. So once you start going around, you know that we did the stitch marker at row eight, so you can count from eight up once you keep going. So I'm gonna keep doing all of my rows off camera, and once I get to that last row, 19, I will show you the next step. Okay guys, it's about an hour later and the lighting is bad again, but we have our rows, and I also went ahead and added on the eyes. So in the pattern, it said to put the safety eyes in between rows 10 and 11 with like six or seven stitches in between. So I just counted from the top down and we've got in between 10 and 11 here. And I just put the eyes where I thought I wanted them to be. I bought a kit of these safety eyes from Amazon for like $5. But if you don't have safety eyes and you still want to do this pattern, you could always just glue on like a little ball of black yarn or you could sew on some eyes. Whatever you want to do to make it unique, then you can definitely do that. But we're on row 19 now, as you can see. If you count down from here to here, we went from 8 to 19 rows. So we did that and it looks so cute right now. It looks like a little ghost. So now I'm going to mark that off. We did the safety eyes, so I'm just going to kind of mark that off too. And now we're on to row 20, which is where we start decreasing. So before when we were doing on the rows, we were increasing our stitches each time and now we're going to be decreasing them. So slowly and surely we're going to get to the point where we will be ending the project. And I'm really sorry if you guys can hear the rain and the thunder. Uh, there's no time today where that is going to stop. So <laughs> it's really loud. So for this, we're going to single crochet in the next five stitches like how we were before. So single crochet in the next stitch, 
And I'm going to put my stitch marker back on here like we've been doing. And then two, next stitch three, next stitch four, and next stitch five. So that was five single crochets. And now we're going to decrease in this next one. So decreasing basically means that you're taking two stitches and you're going to combine them together. So we're decreasing stitches each time. So there are a couple different ways to decrease. There's like invisible decreasing and stuff like that. I'm just gonna show you the basic way um, since you're beginners. You're going to have the next two stitches that you're going to need. So what you're gonna do is you're going to put your hook into the next stitch, this. You're going to yarn over and pull through. You're going to have two loops on your hook. Then you're going to take your hook again, put it into the next stitch like that, yarn over, pull through. You're going to have these three. You're going to yarn over and pull through all three. Just like that and that combines those two stitches to turn it into one. So eventually the project is just going to start closing in on itself because we're decreasing all of those stitches. Let's just go ahead and do that one more time so you guys can see. So in the next five stitches I'm just going to do one single crochet. One, two, three, four, five. And now we're going to decrease these next stitches. So I'm going to insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. Then we're going to put our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. You should have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. We're going to do that all the way around until we get back here and then we'll do the next step. All right, I just finished round 20 and I also sewed the face. I went ahead and sewed the face with just some uh, black thread and a needle. Did that real fast because I wanted to do that before stuffing everything. So we finished with round 20 and now we're going to round 21 where we're gonna single crochet in four stitches and decrease again. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're gonna do a single crochet in the next stitch and then put on my marker. Put in two, next stitch three, next stitch four, and then do the decrease again. So insert, yarn over, pull through, insert into the next stitch again, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through three, and we decreased. So I'm gonna keep doing that all the way around, do four single crochets, then decreasing until we get all the way back around, and then we'll do it again. All right, now we're slowly getting smaller and smaller. So we just finished row 21. Now we're going to do row 22, which is single crocheting in the next three and decreasing. So we're basically just doing the same thing. And then we're going to decrease the next stitches. So insert yarn over, pull through, insert yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. <laughs> and there we go. We decreased again. So I'm just going to three decrease, three decrease all the way around. We're going to do single crochet in two stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next two rounds because I think you guys get the idea. So do the next two rounds like this where we do three and then two and then we'll, we will start stuffing. Okay, we're almost completely there. I did the next two rows and I started stuffing like it says to do. So now I'm just going to single crochet in the next stitch and decrease in the next stitch. So one single crochet, then a decrease, and I just do that all the way around. Then in the next row, you single crochet, decrease all around, and then you finish. So let's go ahead and do that real fast. Since we don't have too much left, it won't take too long to show you. So it does start feeling kind of awkward when you have to deal with the stuffing and everything like that so just keep that in mind it's kind of a weird feeling and there's a lot of pulling and stuff happening when you're closing right, so we have a single crochet in the next stitch and then a decrease so insert insert pull through 
And as you can see, it's gonna start getting smaller and smaller and it's gonna feel more awkward and more awkward. And I'm gonna start stuffing it a little bit more. I want it to be super fluffy. If you don't have polyfill, you can always fill it with any other type of material that you have. You could do toilet paper, which I mean, I wouldn't technically recommend because toilet paper is kind of expensive, but you could use newspaper, you could use tissue paper, anything you have you can stuff this with. But polyfiber fill is not super expensive at the craft store. As you can see, our gout's getting very puffy. So let me finish this row real fast. Now the only thing we have to do is we have to decrease all the way around. So it gets to the point where it's just gonna be kind of awkward to show you, but you're just going to decrease all the way around like we've been doing. Alright, so it is all closed up as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and just kind of cut a little far off so we have just a couple inches left over. And then, you know, you're just going to keep your hook through here. You're going to yarn over and then you're just going to pull it through the loop and then just keep pulling through and tighten it as tight as you can, like a little knot. And as you can see, it kind of sticks out right now. But what you're gonna do is take your little yarn needle and what I typically do, and it may be different for everyone, I'm just showing you what I do, is I kind of just slide it through the needle like that and then it'll be on the needle. And then I'll just stick the needle all the way through, push it through the other side, and then pull. And it'll kind of pull that down where it's, you know, flush. And I didn't stuff it as full as I probably would have liked, but it still looks super cute. And I'm also just gonna go ahead and push it through again. Make sure to push it through right beside the other one or you're gonna have like an awkward thread. <laughs> kind of fluff it a bit. And you can just keep threading it however many times you want. I'm just gonna do it that two times. Then I'm just going to cut the end off and you have the base of your little cat here. So we haven't made the ears or the legs or the tail. And the ears and the legs and all of that are about the same rules as making this. So in this video, I'm only really gonna show you how to do this base part or this video is going to be way too long. But since the stuff that you learned from this base part, you basically already know how to do it. So making the ears and the legs and the tail is the same rules as making the base. So I'm going to make that off camera. I'll have a link for the pattern down below so you guys can try to make the ears, the legs, and the tail yourself because it's the same exact rules as making the little head. And I will get back to you and show you how I put the little pieces onto the base here. All right, we're a little bit later and we have this done. I made the tail. And if you are a beginner and you don't know how to do like color transitions yet, then I would just do the tail like purple or one specific color. I just dropped it other than like switching it because like even it looks a little rough for me because it was so little. So I recommend just doing like full purple or pink or something like that instead of doing the color changing, at least for right now. Then we have the ears. And then we have the little feet over here. Normally what I should have done is I should have made all these little pieces first. So before I stuffed him, I could have just sewed it into his body. That would have been the easiest way to do it, but this one's pretty simple as well. A lot of times I like to do this like double sewing thing. So as you can see, I left some tails for my little ears and stuff, and I'm gonna connect it to my little needle here. And then I find kind of where I want the ear to be, I guess, which is like right here. And I just push it through and pull it. And as you can see, the ear is there. And now I'm going to take this one and do the same thing. So as you can see, it's like in there, it's not secure or anything. So I pulled it through like that. And then I'm going to take some sewing thread and a needle and I'm going to sew those down. So let me do the other ear real fast. So this kind of looks more like mouse ears. This kind of looks like a little mouse, honestly. <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with all of the feet and with the tail. And then I'm going to take sewing thread in the same color as the yarn and I'm just going to sew these little pieces on and we will be all done. tutorial of how to make this little cat was 
easy and not super difficult to understand. If you guys would like me to do more tutorials on different little free patterns, then definitely let me know. I feel like that would be a fun little series to do on my channel where you send me free patterns to make and I make them. So I feel like that'd be kind of fun. Crochet is a really, really great idea for Mother's Day. If you guys are wanting to make something for your mom or grandmother or anyone out there who's like a mother to you, nine times out of 10, any mothers love crocheted items. I can attest to that. I always just make crochet items for people when they love them. So crochet is a really good idea as a gift because you put your time and your heart into it. And I just, it's so cute. I love it. So this little cat is going to my Patreon winner of the month. Not keeping it, it's gonna go to my Patreon winner. Figured I would give it to somebody, so. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned from it. Make sure to check out my links down below to get yourself some of these Liberty Air 2 Pro headphones. Promise you, you will love them. I have been using them every single day and they are seriously so amazing. The noise canceling is just so I'll have a link for those down below. I also have all of my social medias and my other channels down below as well. But I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.